going on? In this video, I'm doing a pregnancy Q&A. So on Instagram, I put it out there for you guys to ask me anything that you wanted about pregnancy. You guys have kind of already been doing that anyway since I've been pregnant. I've gotten so many DMs and uh, random messages and questions. That's what prompted me to do this video in the first place. I found I was getting so some similar questions and uh, kind of repeating myself. And not that that's a bad thing, but I was just like, I feel like lots of people actually are wondering this. I'll just do a video and then everyone can know the answers. I am 30, I'm almost 32 weeks. So we're coming down to to the wire here. I still have a couple weeks to go, but I feel like I've gotten through the majority of my pregnancy to sort of be able to answer these questions. So let's jump right into it. Question number one was, what was something that you didn't expect? And something that I really did not expect was to not really have too much of an appetite. In movies and media, uh, women, pregnant women are always portrayed as to be starving all the time. You know, the saying you're eating for two is, obviously very common. So I assumed that I would be wanting to eat everything under the sun, but in fact, the opposite happened. The only time where my appetite was sort of normal was during my second trimester, but first and third, I just don't want any food. And obviously I have to eat, so I find myself just sort of forcing stuff down. Protein has been something that I don't care about at all. And normally I'm a huge meat eater. I love my meat. I love steak, I love lamb, and I just haven't cared about it. I wouldn't necessarily call it an aversion, but like I, I can look at a steak on a plate and I'm like, yeah, I just don't feel anything. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So I've been relying a lot on protein smoothies to get make sure I'm getting enough protein. I'm eating snacks more so here and there versus like actual meals because I just don't really want anything to eat. It's like really weird. So that was something I did not expect at all. Somebody asked, did your husband absorb any of your symptoms? <laughs> um, the short Short answer is no, but the sort of ironic part and also very upsetting part as well is that we've been locked down uh, during my entire pregnancy and so we haven't had access to the gym. So my husband and me both are completely out of our normal exercise routine. So he's kind of been like a little bit more lenient with his diet and whatnot, um, as have I, only because I'm pregnant. Um, he's just kind of more like, well, I can't work out like, you know, and then sort of everything in your life kind of spirals a little bit with that. So uh, in a way he's sort of kind of been there with me food wise and, and like snack wise and things like that, but not nothing to do with like pregnancy, just really because he hasn't been able to work out or play hockey or do any of his regular physical activities because all of that is canceled right now. One of you guys asked, what does it feel like when the baby kicks? What a crazy thing, first of all. I can't even believe that you eventually grow a human and then it starts kicking you from the inside out. Like I just, it blows my mind. It's so alien to me. So at the beginning, it feels very fluttery is sort of the term that I've tried to use. And people are like, what do you mean? But it's, that's really all I can picture. Like if you picture like a bird flapping its wings pretty fast, or even kind of going on a roller coaster or over a speed bump pretty fast, you get that little like, woo, kind of thing, feeling in your stomach. It sort of starts off like that. And then now we're at 32 weeks where I am now, it's full blown jumping jacks, snow angels, like punches. I've seen my stomach like be punched and then it just stays there. I'm looking at my stomach and it's literally on an angle. It's so, so weird. Sometimes she's even getting to the point where it almost like hurts me a little bit depending on where I'm sitting because it's very strong. But it really honestly feels like a human being is inside of you and punching your stomach from the inside out, <laughs> which I know it's like not the greatest description, but it's just a really wild, crazy feeling. Oh, the other thing is, is sometimes it can feel like gas and then you realize it's not and it's just the baby kicking. <laughs> so fluttery gas with like that roller coaster feeling is like the best way I would describe it. Next question is, do you have any insane or weird cravings? So unfortunately the answer is kind of boring. I've had no intense cravings specifically, especially because I just mentioned I didn't really have an appetite or I haven't really had an appetite, but I have noticed my fruit intake has increased like crazy. I always kind of want fruit around or on hand. Like I wake up and I find myself just wanting fruit right away. Not any fruit in particular, just maybe the sweetness, maybe the juiciness, maybe the refreshingness. I've made sure to have like, I'll go to the grocery store and it's like, I go crazy in the produce section. And I'll always at any point in time in my kitchen, I'll have at least like pineapple, berries, couple apples, couple pears. I'll go through like a bit of an orange kick. We'll have some oranges. 
I was told I wasn't supposed to eat grapes for so long. And then finally, one actually one day I had a really intense craving for green grapes, but that was the only time that I really wanted something. I just wanted that like hard, refreshing crunch. So I asked my OB, I was like, can I eat grapes? And she's like, yes, just wash them really well and you're fine. So I was like, yes. And I ran to the store and got grapes and they were like the best grapes I've ever had. So yeah, I make sure I have a lot of fruit on hand. And that's really the only thing that I've noticed before pregnancy, I did eat fruit, just like nowhere near as often throughout the day that I do now and not as much. Someone asked, how has sleeping been? Very good question. As I am a person that needs eight hours guaranteed, or I'm like really cranky and unproductive. Sleeping, I will say, it, I think it could be worse. It's not terrible, but it's not the best. It's not like that comfortable. And number one, the reason being is, so it's funny, I've been a stomach and side sleeper my whole life. And as I've gotten a little bit older, I'm like, okay, I need to start sleeping on my back for like age reasons and like skin reasons. And I know JLo sleeps on her back and she's like the best skin ever. So I'm like, okay, I wanna try to like train myself to become a back sleeper. So I finally learned to get comfortable on my back back while sleeping and then I got pregnant. And, and the number one thing that your doctor will tell you is they don't want you sleeping completely on your back. So I was like, how ironic. And then you can't sleep on your stomach. So you're kind of limited to just your, both your sides and it can sort of get uncomfortable sometimes. And then even with your sides, gravity pulls your stomach down to like the side of your bed. So it always feels like your stomach is like leaning to one side or the other. So you really have to utilize pillows. I have not caved and bought a pregnancy pillow yet. And I feel like at this point I probably won't, but I do have to sleep with like, like I can sleep on my back and then I have to wedge a pillow underneath my back. So I'm sort of angled, so I'm not flat. And then to sleep on my side, I have to put up another pillow underneath my stomach so that it's centered, if that makes sense. I usually end up putting one underneath my back as well. The annoying thing is, is just I have to have pillows everywhere and I don't normally sleep like that. I like to have more space. Um, but I just, I need the support right now. And, uh, but once I have my pillows all in place, I usually do get a good sleep. So I am thankful for that because I know a lot of women have a hard time sleeping, but yeah, you really need like good support, especially when you get into your third trimester and you're starting to get really big. Someone asked, did you guys want a girl? So for those of you that don't know, we are having a girl and, and we had no preference. I just assumed it would be a boy because most of my entire family is boys. My husband, his majority of his family is all boys too. And everything that I've read scientifically, it says like, look around at your families, whatever you kind of have more of usually is what you'll have. And so I was like, okay, it's gonna be a boy for sure but it's not, it's a girl. And uh, we were so excited, we're so happy. We really did not, not have a preference whatsoever. This is our first baby. So it's not like we, you know, we already had a girl or something like that. So we're so excited. We just wanted happy, healthy, and it didn't matter the gender at all to us. So next question is, do you know the name yet? And the answer is yes. We have the first, middle, and then obviously the last. So we have her full name picked out, but I'm gonna wait to tell you guys because I want it to be a surprise for the day that she comes into the world. Are you one of those women who loves being pregnant? Great question, because I hear that a lot too. And the short answer is no, <laughs> but I will say I've been blessed to have a healthy pregnancy and it hasn't been like that bad. It's just uncomfortable. And, and it, basically your life is just altered pretty drastically for like ten, nine, 10 months. I like being able to do my intense workouts and I like being able to have a glass of wine. I like being able to eat sushi. So I don't like love it, but I'm, you know, it's the price you pay to have children and I want kids. So I'm not, I'm trying not to really complain about it. Uh, it does have its downsides and you know, you're not the most comfortable and all those things, but it's almost over. It's a short nine, 10 months. And then, you know, you have an amazing gift afterwards. So I don't want to say like, I hate it cause I don't, uh, but I definitely don't love it. Like I'm not when I was like, oh my God, I love being pregnant so much. No. Okay. Somebody asked, what is the worst symptom that you've experienced? As I've said a few times, I have been so blessed to have a really good, like even keel chill pregnancy. So I haven't really had anything like insane happen, but something that I was really not aware of is because your hormones are like all up and down and so unlevel, the congestion in your body is like insane. So my nose has been so stuffed for the entire time. I feel like I've just had one long cold, but I feel fine in every other aspect of life. It's just my nose is so stuffed. Like I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I can't even breathe because it's so stuffed. So I cannot wait for that to be over. It's just like really uncomfortable, really inconvenient. I really had no idea 
that that was a thing. And then I did go through like two weeks where it was running, <laughs> like, it, which is, I guess, sort of better than being too stuffed up. But like, I couldn't even do anything. It was like, my nose was running so badly. And then you're limited on the things that you can take. Like you're not supposed to have Tylenol, cold and sinus or anything like that. So you kind of just have to deal with it. And so, yeah, your nose just almost doesn't know how to handle all the hormones in your body. So it's just going crazy stuffed, leaking, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's kind of been the weirdest symptom. And then also this is a little bit TMI, but pregnancy constipation is a real thing and it's insane. It doesn't matter what you eat. You can have all the fiber in the world. You can eat super healthy, which is like kind of more or less what I do. And I've always been like regular in the past, but it, your body, I think it's the hormone thing as well. It just doesn't matter. And all the pressure on everything you're so prone to it like any little thing can just like make you constipated and it's really really uncomfortable so those two things i'd say have been the worst uh symptoms i've experienced so next question is have you gotten any stretch marks and if so what products did you use to limit them so i have been extremely blessed to not have had any stretch marks knock on wood and i still don't at 32 weeks i do think that they're pretty hereditary though that's what i hear and i don't remember really any like my grandmother my mom like i don't think any women in my family have really really had stretch marks. So I think that helps a lot. I will link a video for you guys here on all the products that I use. It was this brand called Ever Eden. They specifically make products for pregnancy and women who want to limit stretch marks. I've used their products all the way from, I think my the beginning of my second trimester, cause that's when you start to show the first one you like, especially with your first baby, that my first trimester, I had like no bump whatsoever. So as soon as your stomach starts to stretch, that's a good time to start using products. And I, I'm still using them now. So I used, I started from the, my second trimester all the way until now. And then I also have bio oil as like a backup and I have coconut oil too. So I think just like a ton of old, like deep, penetrating oils, just really making sure your bump and your boobs too are like just so saturated with moisture. I think that's like really the key. Even sometimes if like I find that like I itch my stomach a little bit because sometimes it, get, it gets itchy because it's stretching. If it even looks a little bit dry, I'll go to the bathroom right away and just put oil on that spot because I just wanna make sure it's always moisturized and hydrated. Okay, and advice to women who are currently trying to get pregnant. I would say that first of all, like I knew nothing before, like I was, I was literally embarrassed at how little I knew because I guess we're just not really taught it in school, but at least for me anyway, I feel like growing up in my sort of world, we were taught, if you have unprotected sex one time, like you will definitely be pregnant. And that is so not the case. Like it's truly, it truly is a miracle to become pregnant. And that's because you have one day a month where an egg is able to be fertilized. So I would say get your math down <laughs> first and foremost, so that you just limit the frustration and limit the amount of months it takes to get pregnant. So I used an app. I was already tracking my period from like before cause I'd been off birth control for a while. It helped me know when to expect when I was gonna get it and just help me plan my life and whatnot. So get any app, there's a ton out there and start tracking your period. And as, after like two or three months, it will now learn your cycle and then it will be able to predict when you're going to ovulate. And the ovulation day is the key date in all of this. And so then they say to try like the week leading up to your ovulation day. But if you know the exact date, like that's even better. You can get ovulation uh, test strips as well where you just pee on the strip and then it tells you whether or not you're ovulating. Those can be helpful too if you don't wanna track your period. But basically just like find your day and then that's the day that you try and then it's highly likely that you will get pregnant because that is the day that your egg is able to be fertilized. So first and foremost, understand like the science and the mechanics behind it. <laughs> and then the second thing would be, don't like stress or overcomplicate things. Like I kind of thought it would happen like the first time uh, just because of like, you know, what we had been told growing up. And I think it took us about three months, but yeah, don't overstress, don't freak out. The other thing too was like the second we tried the first month, I was like, oh my God, should I like stop drinking alcohol? Should I stop eating, blah, blah, blah. Like, just don't worry about it, live your life. And then once you've done a positive pregnancy test, then you can start making changes and like go to the doctor and all that. But like leading up to it before, just don't freak yourself out because stress will probably make it even harder for it to happen. And you being cool and healthy and like exercising and just relaxing, I think will increase your chances.
So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you got some tips. If you guys have any follow-up questions for me whatsoever, please leave them in the comments and I will answer every single one of them. Also, it would be spectacular if you subscribe to my channel and you can follow me on Instagram for more.